Hi, I'm Seamless, and today it's time for a new Production Basics video. This one is going to be about the basic waveforms, and what they are, what they sound like, and the things they can be used for, and stuff like that. More advanced uses will be covered in other, other videos, but uh, for now we're starting with the actual basics. Identifying what they are, and showing them what they're like. I have here a Citrus, which I'm going to use to actually change the different waveforms, explain what they're, what they're for. I also have a EQ open so we can see the frequency spectrum plus an oscilloscope so that we can see the actual wave shape. An oscilloscope is actually an important point about why it's even called that. It might be fairly obvious to some of you, but for those who are new completely, I'm not leaving anything out. So an oscilloscope is literally a display that shows the oscillation of a signal that goes through it. You can see here the signal is oscillating. That is to say, it's moving back and forth. That's what oscillation means, up and down, back and forth. Now, what this, the reason why waves do that and they actually make sound is because what a signal is at, that we're able to hear is that it's information that's being pushed into voltage or electricity of some kind. I'm actually not super duper clear about the specifics about this part, but it's essentially it goes to your speaker and it makes your speaker cone move. And it moves according to the shape and speed of the oscillation, which is why we hear what we hear when we hit a note. And it does that kind of thing. So that's what oscillation is. And that's what that's why waveforms are important at all. So to start off with, here's a sine wave. This is what's referred to as a sine wave. It moves smoothly up and down, and it exists as a single frequency. Sine waves are very useful for lots of things. Uh, most of the time you hear it and hear them in, used in, in the context of a bass because they're extremely clean. In fact, they're the cleanest. They're the, the basically the cleanest possible signal you can have in a sound. That's a sine wave. Citrus has this nice shape morphing fader which lets us smoothly change between the four primary basic shapes which are sine wave, triangle, saw wave, and square wave. Next is the triangle wave. That was almost Lord of the Rings. So, um, a triangle wave is very similar to a sine wave, except that instead of being a smooth transition, it is a sharp and immediate transition. So it goes up on one side, and then it comes back down the other side immediately and with great speed. So it switches around. And here we can see what it looks like in the frequency spectrum. It is... You can see additional harmonics added to the sound versus when it was a sine wave. So from here we can actually make some interesting claims about the differences between these two types of waveforms. Is that, because if we, if we look at the triangle wave, we see that that original frequency that is in the sine wave is actually still there. But the only change is that it added additional harmonics. And in fact, if we get rid of these harmonics with the correct filter type, I put the EQ in the wrong order. Burp. There we go. Now it's actually before the wave candy, like, like it looks like it is. If we get rid of the additional harmonics, we see that it is actually just a sine wave. And in fact, if we got rid of the lowest, uh, the fundamental tone, which is what the, the, the actual root note of everything is called. Uh, We actually get it sharp enough, we see that that higher harmonic is also a sine wave. In fact, when we look at an EQ and we see a bunch of harmonics, each individual one is actually just a sine wave. Every single one, uh, when, it, when isolated by itself, is essentially a sine wave. And when they're added together, you get uh, a different uh, waveform of some kind, a different, a different sound. And that's actually the basis entirely of what additives of this is, is. And I do have tutorials on that, actually. If you go to the playlists and you look up the Harmer tutorials from FL Basic, uh, FL Basic series, um, the very first one explains additives of this as it is re referenced inside uh, Harmer. However, this is true for anything that uses additive, additive synthesis. But that's super duper, it's kind of advanced, so we're not really going to talk about that in terms of using it. But just be aware that additional harmonics are actually just additional time waves. 
it's all weird looking now because I have these EQ types. So yes, and then, uh, actually there's one more thing I want to show you about uh, the waveform before we move on to the next one. I know I'm moving a bit slowly, but I am trying to cram as much information into these as possible. So if I record the waveform, I have uh, Edison set on spectral view mode. I'm going to put bring it back to dual view, so now we, have, now we can see both the waveform and the frequency spectrum. But if I zoom far enough in, it's actually not going to show us. Uh, either of those. Just going to show us the individual. Oops. I ruined everything. Individual samples. I'll just get rid of playlists. I don't need that. Now, if we zoom far enough into one of the peaks. Okay, it's actually kind of hard to see because it wasn't loud enough. But if you look at the peak, the peak actually isn't sharp, it's not completely sharp. Because like we said before about the idea of um, about the idea of each individual initial harmonic being a new sine wave, because it's built this out of sine waves, the peaks are actually also built out of individual sine waves. It'll actually be clearer when we move on to the next waveform type, the saw wave. You can actually see a little bit what I'm talking about in the wave candy itself when I play the tone. It turns down a little bit because it's kind of loud, isn't it? So here we have a saw wave. A saw wave is, is actually you can sort of see what's going on in the EQ because I appear to have broken it. Saw wave, along with having the fundamental tone, has a lot of additional harmonics. In fact, it has all of a all 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 of a particular kind of harmonic. A harmonic is defined as a tone that is uh, a multiple of the fundamental, and there's a lot of them. In fact, if there would be infinite, infinite numbers of them, if um, we didn't have band limiting in terms of sample rate, but that's not something we want to talk about right now. Anyway. A saw wave is of the most frequency rich type of the basic waveforms, which means which means that they're really good for starting starting you know base level things. This is actually a very um, important part of what's referred to as subtractive synthesis. Subtractive synthesis is where you start with something that has a lot of frequencies and you take away from them with filters and stuff. In fact, this particular sound might be very familiar to you. Through the application of the filter, I was able to change the sound, but in in doing so, I'm taking away frequencies from the sound. And if I'm going to be doing that, starting with a sound that has all the frequencies is very you know a good idea. So that's what saw waves are for. Now, like I was talking about with the um, with the uh, triangle wave, let's actually look at uh, a recording of a saw wave. <laughs> yep. I, I don't even need to zoom in that far for you to actually see that uh, the peaks, while they appear sharp, are not actually sharp. And you can you can start to see how they're built up of individual sine waves. That's the idea of added synthesis. I mean, think about think about what we talked about earlier about what oscillations are even they're, they're even for, right? They they move speaker cones. So if we look at a shape of a saw wave, it's saying that at the end of the first oscillation, the point of its very end is one hundred percent opposite of the point of its very beginning, which in phase in phase terms and settings is functionally identical. But this does mean that the speaker cone is, is being told to go from one position to immediately the opposite position instantaneously. And that's not exactly physically possible. This is why, actually, as it turns out, that saw waves in general don't do that. Because you you you're, you might be thinking, okay, well, if you tell if you tell a speaker to do that, it's going to try to do that, and it will create essentially what we're hearing. Like, in fact, it would it would do that in the analog world, 
but not even analog uh, saw waves really do that because if you did, uh, different speakers would sound different. It would actually it would actually react differently, and then you, your sound would be sound would sound different at every single system. I mean, they do already sound different at every single system, but it would be a, a really big difference. So that's a saw wave. The last of the basic waveforms is a square wave. Now, harmonically, a square wave is pretty similar to a saw wave. A saw wave has all the harmonics, and a square wave has half of all the harmonics. It has every other one as it happens. It has no even harmonics, and as a result, we get a square wave. You might be familiar with hearing these sounds in several um, older school things like video game sounds and stuff like that just because they're very basic and very uh, ubiquitous and easy that uh, they're a big staple of a lot of a lot of old sound design. And there's actually a, another ver mode of the square wave which is referred to as the pulse width modified square where we modify the pulse of the square. That is really video gamey sounding, isn't it? So yes. Now, this is this is sort of a beginning look at the, a, a part of production that's based on sort of sound design, um, and using the basic waveforms, and then later the most the most basic effects, the most basic filters, those things. Using the most basic waveforms is almost all of the sound design that we can think of. Like even. Um, I, there's, there's a couple of artists like whose whose songs when I listen to them like Nero actually older Nero tracks that every single sound was entirely made up of saw waves and not in some ex exceedingly clever way either like it was very identifiably saw waves like the 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 idea of the sound type called the super saw is called that because it's just a lot of saw waves. <laughs> That's the super saw, and so the, the beginning to get you're beginning to get good at sound design when you're able to listen to a sound and identify the building blocks of it. You because you, you have you've used you've messed around with the basic waveforms, the basic effects, basic filters, and through your experience in doing so, you can identify. Okay, cool. This this sound is made up of saw waves. This sound is made up of square waves. This is a sine wave. That kind of thing. And that's really the only the only way you can really do that is just to have a lot of experience in order to have a lot of stuff spelled out to you. Like it might not be immediately obvious to you that um, you can make a pretty convincing bell sound just by using sine waves with some kind of volume envelope on it. And a whole lot of reverb. It might not have occurred to you that that's how that's, that, that kind of stuff is done, but it is. And so like that's that's the kind of thing, now that you know that whenever you hear a similar sound, you're going to say, OK, cool. That sounds a lot like that, but it has some differences. Where are those differences from? And predominantly, the differences are from particular frequency content. And those were just that's why that's why I went through uh, showing you what um, the individual frequency content is of all the various waveforms. I mean, Chances are, honestly, like 80% of both sounds are made out of saw waves just because it has all the frequencies, that kind of thing. And more complex sounds uh, do interesting things by manipulating the position or placement of these frequencies. And that's a lot of uh, super advanced, super crazy stuff. A lot of which I've actually already covered in things like about how to bass tutorials and stuff, like, and stuff like that. But today was just a look. I mean, I got uh, I actually got way more advanced than I wanted to get. Um, initially, I was just going to show you what the waveforms were and kind of play them and be like, this is the waveforms. See you next time. But I've given you a whole lot of information, and I hope that wasn't too much. Um, so yeah, just to kind of recap, sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, square wave, pulse with modified square wave. 
I kind of I kind of put that in there with the basic waveforms. It's pretty it's pretty predominant. And I mean, you also noticed how Citrus does, it doesn't give you really any one solid version of these waveforms. I mean, you can you can get to them just fine, but you have all these intermediary parts. Which could be a lot of fun. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.